Hey everybody, welcome back to the cabin. What date is it? Date, date, date is what? The 13th of November today. Got a chilly morning out there. It's uh, about zero Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit. But it's strong east wind, south by southeast wind actually. Which means I'm going to tackle today a little bit differently when I go into the deer woods. Still got, uh, what, six days left of the rifle season for 2023. I am going to, I'm still trying to get a decent sized buck. I have the one small buck that we processed over the weekend actually. Fully cut it up, butchered it and got it into the freezer. It ended up only being about 50 pounds of meat, which surprised me. That's probably the <laughs> smallest deer I've shot in years. And um, it's, you know, 50 meals, I would say, because that's a pound basically per day is what uh, we allow for my wife and I. So I think, what was it, 30 pounds of ground. Now what I did do is that I had a bunch of ground pork left over from the pig that I bought last, well this past, what was it, spring maybe? I got that full pig. So I took the ground and I had the ground because I asked the butcher for it instead of making sausage because I don't like this sausage mixes that the butchers use. Usually has some kind of preservatives in it, nitrites and things that we actually react to because we have a fairly clean diet otherwise. So I took that ground, thawed a bunch of pounds of it and then made deer sausage at a four to one ratio. So four pounds of venison from that spike buck and one pound of pork. And then I added salt, white pepper, uh, sage, thyme, and some maple sugar that I made uh, to some of that, probably half of that. Is that it? I'm not sure if there's... Oh, uh, nutmeg. So breakfast sausage basically. Uh, turned out really good. <laughs> it's really tasty. So the rest of um, that, because I only had four pounds of pork that I could find in the freezer. I think there's some stuff buried under the moose, but I have to <laughs> pry that out of the freezer to to get it out and get the rest of that butchered. Um, so what did I end up with? 20, 20 pounds, so 16 and four, yeah, 20 pounds of of uh, sausage. And then the rest just uh, packages, one pound packages of ground. And then ground all the trimmings from about a quarter of the moose, still have to do three, three quarters of what I have of my portion. Still have to butcher that. So I'm gonna pull that out of the freezer today and get it thawing so that I can uh, cut into that. But it's amazing <laughs> when you don't have the proper like equipment for doing butchering full time, it takes a lot longer than I always think it's going to. So it took us, uh, you know, almost all day yesterday to uh, grinding, especially that's what takes a lot of the time, grinding it up and then separating it and packaging it. Then uh, my daughter and her boyfriend were up. So spent the evening with them cooked up some fresh moose steaks, which surprisingly, because I uh, came back from that trip, the moose went straight into a, a freezer where we got the, where we were hunting and then came in quarters. And then I brought it back, my uh, three quarter portion back and just put it straight into the freezer here. So I didn't actually eat any of it yet. So that was our first um, moose steaks. And I think it's my first or my wife's first moose steaks in years. I don't think I've shot one for 10 years or more. You know, I haven't been really moose hunting. Anyway, that uh, was awesome. Really, really good steak. Ended up, they're very lean, no fat on them. And I wasn't sure, because they were just uh, a leg portion. I wasn't sure if they were gonna be tough. So I marinated it in a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and something I like, I've always done with wild game. I don't marinate it all the time, but when I am, I like to use the vinegar from the hot pepper that we pickle. So we pickle hot banana peppers, and then that vinegar has a spiciness to it. So I use that, a little bit of that, to break down the, the muscle and the yeah, muscle fibers in the wild game meat. So that was really, really good with mushrooms and onions and potatoes from the garden, of course, and squash from the garden, of course. So that was great, but now I do, I've got another month of season left, basically. The 15th of December up here is when the season ends. And then down south um, and around Toronto where I can get extra tags, where my buddies hunt, um, that season opens till December 30th. So I am trying to get 
along with the uh, my daughter and wife trying to get probably two more two more deer I would say so we have three for this year plus the moose plus the bear and that'll be enough meat for the year I, I believe and then we'll add some small game and some fish to that but right now I am going to head out uh, this wind it's kind of I, well it's different I don't usually get a southeast wind so what I need to do I'm gonna go out to the west here which is kind of counterintuitive but the reason is that if I go west and then swing north and then get beyond the bedding area that the deer most most of the deer are headed to and then work back towards here I'll be coming through a big oak grove so I'll be coming from their bedding site bedding area main bedding area through this oak grove that they're feeding in heavily because there's a lot of acorns in there this year and and back that's all on crown land and then back onto my own private uh, land here and back towards the cabin so if it's a big loop part of it the wind will be poor for me it'll be blowing towards them but once i get beyond their bedding site and can start coming back i'll be nose into the wind now there's a slight skiff of snow um, and it's snowing slightly right now so i probably can pick up some fresh tracks and that's what i'm hoping cut a couple of fresh tracks and follow them peak rut right now what's happening is the Deer are disappearing off my trail cameras over the last uh, several days where they normally are and I'm seeing only fawns which means the bucks are breeding does so they'll go off and kind of hide in a thicket or a spot that's sort of out of the way so that they're not getting harassed by other deer and uh, they'll be breeding for say two or three days and then then the bucks will separate from those does and go looking for new ones so they could be cruising but for the most part, they're kind of locked down with these does. Um, and I've seen that on my trail cameras in several spots. And when we were out for a drive, what were we doing? Oh, picking up some sourdough starter, which is... <laughs> got the oven here now, so... And I baked that bread, but I just used yeast for that one. And thought we should probably get back into making sourdough bread. And my wife, um, ironically, the same day, we got a call from our, our milk supplier that uh, she had some... Um, yeah, she's mil milking a new cow and she had an abundance of it again so we can start making my wife can start making cheese again and uh, drinking raw milk and uh, and making a uh, kefir and yogurt and butter and stuff like that so as we were out on that drive though uh, there's a doe out in the middle of the field in the middle of the day in a spot that she would never be in during the middle of the day and a buck was in the tree line you can see him just standing there kind of watching waiting for her to come back so that another good indication of deer that are uh, in kind of lockdown like in that breeding mode where they're just hiding out staying in one spot those in the uh, the does that are in estrus and the bucks are inseparable he'll follow her everywhere so that's what i'm hoping i'm going to cut into that kind of situation find a doe that's in heat and maybe have several bucks kind of running around her or chasing her and hope to intercept that and I'll work my way back and then spend I still haven't finished the cellar I got it probably another day or maybe even two days down there to finish up so I'll spend the midday doing that and then head out back hunting in the in the evening likely depending on the wind all right so Callie doesn't like this phase where I take off for a couple hours and leave her in the cabin but um, anyway she, we've already been fetching out there in the dark this morning so we burnt off a little bit of energy so hopefully she's fine Anyway, you, know, you can rejoin me um, when I get back from the hunt. I'll probably take uh, just a GoPro along with me, capture a little bit of footage, but not highest quality. And I, when I'm focused on hunting, I'm really focused on just harvesting meat, not on capturing footage for uh, for an audience. I'm not uh, making hunting videos, so I tend to not um, get the greatest, and I never sh you know, end up getting. Uh, great footage or any footage maybe of the deer that I end up harvesting or any of the game animals for that matter anyway I'm gonna head out now and I'll take uh, I'll see you back here shortly in the cabin
had a doe at 30 yards when I first got out, just 100 yards that way. She came across the trail, stopped, and I just uh, sat there and grunted because I was hoping that she was going to have a buck fall on her. But unless there was a buck in front of her that I didn't see across before I got to that spot. Forest was relatively open, but there's lots of blind spots because it's still, you know, full timber. Lots of balsam firs down low, so there's spots that I couldn't see. And then there was a steep ridge with rocky ridge with a gut kind of going up through it. And that's where she went, so easily could have been a buck ahead of her. So I don't know if I'm going to go out this evening and go to that spot. The problem is that she couldn't smell me, which is why she was not alarmed. But the uh, wind is going to be going in to where she went uh, this afternoon. So if she's coming out of there to go to the oak area for the acorns, She'd be coming straight into the wind with her nose and so with the buck. So it would be really hard to get in front of them. But let's see. Get some work done and then figure out what I'm going to do. into the deck here.
You look tired, you just ready for bed now? Yeah. 